Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Eagle Trading, 7.50 p.m., 6-5-2020. This market continues to blow minds, including mine. But I've been on the right side of it, so it's not so bad. I kind of wonder what some of the professionals like David Tepper are going to say about this market and a lot of guys that were bearish eventually just kind of throw in the towel. You can see them throw in the towel yesterday, actually. We mentioned that. I'm trying to figure out where this bubble can go. And I, and I say bubble because on some level, the market is... It, it has all the characteristics of a bubble. But it also has the characteristics of a market that has bottomed out. And it's almost like a, we call it the chameleon market coming out of recession. A lot of the things that you see, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but all the hallmarks of a, of a bottom of a market without two things. One, usually coming out of recession, the Fed is pumping the brakes on liquidity and and they're stomping on the gas here. In fact, they're usually mopping it up. <clears throat> Rate changes will usually the, the hallmark of a directional change from recession into a growth period. And we're kind of, we're not seeing that technically in the market. Um, which is a little bit bizarre and a little bit make you scratch your head and wonder what monster they've created here, but it doesn't really matter. All that matters is the market has basically V'd from the bottom at a time that nobody thought it would V, including myself. I did not see a V recovery here. But when we look at something like the Hekanashi candles here showing the SPY move in wave five, we expected a correction. Wave one, two, three, four, five, we said wave five would be shorter than the prior waves, which were longer on the Hekanashi candles. And it was short, and then we literally went into the what we thought would be the correction candle. Didn't expect a big market drop, didn't expect a you know a a collapse like everybody's been talking about since this area and since this area and since this area along here. So we did expect a pullback, and then if we zoom in in that area there, instead, and I don't know what caused the massive move to the upside, but when we should have had the pullback here, we had the FOMO blow off to the upside. And you can see that, most importantly, when we look at what's been keeping us from going heavily short the market, is the expansion in the breadth on the McClellan oscillator and the expansion in the move on the RSI indicators. And we can look at both right now really quick and try to determine, okay, so now what with the market? And here was the McClellan oscillator that we've been using that's been really important. And this actually, these double tops and then the triple top here were important because the double top here that we saw was a lower high on the McClellan oscillator, yet the market was moving higher. And then we had this last peak right here that you can see on the McClellan oscillator. And it basically didn't even come close to these other previous highs. And that's when the market had the big pullback in here. The sharp pullback that everybody said was the head and shoulders break, but it actually wasn't. It said it was a little bit of a head fake, bear trap, caught all the bears off guard, pullback, into the Hekanashi candle here, which is very short weakness. And I said, if everything starts to move in tandem, watch out. And instead of back testing it and then failing, we blew through and then back tested, basically coming in short of that and then fired to the upside. So now forget about the channels. Now, where are we at on horizontal resistance? We still haven't, believe it or not, with the expansion we've seen in the New York Stock Exchange breadth, we still haven't seen, that's 3,000 plus stocks, if I'm not mistaken, we still haven't seen a higher peak on the broader um, breadth of the market. So a little bit concerning, right? But how can you say anything's concerning with you know new all-time highs on NASDAQ that we pushed through? Um, but it will tell you a little bit about what's going to happen here is that once these start to top out, it's going to be really ripe for a correction. Plus now we're getting into the RSIs that we talked about being a concern if you start getting them to 74s and 75s. And we got up to, what, almost 74 today. So a lot of weird action today. From the get-go, let's change the candles here and kind of show you what's going on. It's a little bit clearer with the bar charts. 
but from the get go, it was like in madness. I mean, I shorted Boeing right off the bat today. I had a nice little um, opening trade, which I thought was was the bomb, right? And my stop was tight again. I was my stop was just above where we opened up at, and as soon as it opened, I had 200 shares short, and it just tanked. And I'm like panicking to cover because the money is on the table, a thousand dollars in the bag within one minute. And then if we kind of zoom in and see the dip here, and they bought it up hard, and then it pulled back again, and you're like, okay, which way is this gonna sort itself out? And you can see which way it sorted itself out, and then had to go long. Cause once that wedge broke, man, it blew through the top. I mean, this is a textbook. This is like Mickey Mouse charting to make money today. Today was like, today was crazy. Taking candy from a baby. Break that wedge and it's long and strong, man. Holy crap. Then it started to form this little channel up here and then I had to go short. And then it wedged again and I'm like, okay, if it breaks this here, it's time to short it again. And then it just rolled over and kind of beach ball bounced into the close. That was just textbook. Then Dollar Tree, I'm like, I need to short something. I'm like, what other stock's better to short than Dollar Tree? Who's going to Dollar Tree with this strong market, right? We're shopping at Saks Fifth Avenue. That's a stupid keyboard. But Dollar Tree, same situation. Dollar Tree was same type of chart formation. If I pull it up, my damn dog was freaking out. It's over the door. Sorry about that, guys. See what my keyboard does? D-L-T-R. Stop it. Dollar Tree, same thing. I'm like, I gotta find something to short, and I'll go into some more details here. So Dollar Tree forms this little bull pattern wedge and then pops to the upside. Gotta go along Dollar Tree, right? But then Dollar Tree starts acting weird. I'm like, okay, I need to find something to short. What better to short than Dollar Tree? And, and Dollar Tree made this long, long, like, and it could not get above this, this line here from this pivot. It could not get above this line. So I just set my, my stop at like 95.20 up in here. A couple hundred shares short, waiting for the close. I'm like, this thing's got to crater into the close. Sure enough, back test the lower line and just drops. And I just covered into the close. So another one where I was long and then short again. But I'm patient, waiting for the shape change. Perfect example too. RTX. Look at this beast. This thing's been unbelievable. The one year chart. Same thing, channels, 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 channels. I use these channels all the time. They're kind of my homegrown channels. And I don't do a lot of horizontal stuff, but if stuff's moving up, I do channels that way. If stuff's moving down, I do channels that way. But you can kind of see us correct this downtrend and then break back up in the channel, back test it. And then we go up open above this channel, can't get back to the bottom end, what does it want to do, fire up. But if you look at these little pivot points, top here, Failure here, this candle is super important because this candle is before the big drop. So we want to make sure that we touch that candle. And then what does it do today? Spot on, hits that chart. And once again, another good short. If you didn't want to chase long, you can kind of see how the channels are, right? Catch the top in here. Catch the top in here. Catch the top in here. These intermediate channels too are great because they back test the failure. And then it back tests this channel. So these channels are are almost algorithmic type that I'm using and I'm kind of creating on my own. Things in here got a little sketchy and open up above it. You'd think, okay, now we're gonna rock it up, but they failed. And once it starts to fail, you can go short. And then you gotta kind of figure out what's happening from there. You use the Hekinashi candles. But once again, the top channel right here, perfect if you're looking for something to short. So these channels are working great. Norwegian cruise lines, we bought in the low 15s. Um, in the newsletter, we talked about for buy and hold guys, sold it today. Um, it is what it is. I mean, this actually looks like it could start to move higher too, but a lot of these moves today, there was a little bit of, I don't know, there's a little bit of internal weakness today. A lot of stuff was gapping up. I bought some MFA overnight because it just looked like this thing was going to rock it. I sold it, man, right off the bat. MFA, look at that gap in MFA. One of the subscribers, I think, asked me about it the other day. When's this going to move out? I said, once it breaks out of this little channel in here on big volume, it's going to rock it. And I said, do your volume calculations. 
I said it average trading is like 25 million shares a day, a day. So if you run back the math and you work the hours in the trading day, and you can be able to tell within the first 30 minutes, and you can see that yesterday, big volume day. So I bought it overnight and sold it in the morning after this big breakout over this little channel in here, channel, channel, channel. Wham, I mean, look at that. I mean, how do you not sell that move? Some of these things are up 30, 40% today. With this move closing towards the bottom of the channel, it was still up 22% today. What the hell? I mean, I think it was like 390 or something in pre-market. 350 in pre-market. Same thing with TWO, I bought that last night, same thing. Crazy move, breaking out of the channel, breaking on big volume. I don't know if it's short covering, a little bit of bargain buying. It doesn't mean these things are done either because opened up again, I had to dump it and it closed towards the bottom of the channel. So a little bit of, like I said, internal hidden weakness in some of the sketchy stocks like this, but doesn't mean they're done. Doesn't mean they're done, but it's a little, it's a weird, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to tell you guys. It's a weird, a little bit of a red flag, right? Can't clear above this on huge volume too. Biggest volume we've seen since the big sell-offs and then these bounces in here where people are trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So a little concerned about the internal weakness in some of these stocks. They're kind of like little canaries. Nothing major because the market looks long and strong, like I said. Um, I did buy FOUR intraday trading today on the IPO. This one looked really good and I didn't know what to do. These are so crazy out of the get-go. I just have an alarm that tells me, I just set an alarm. If it opens up above $5 a share, it sends me an alarm, right? We obviously know it's going to open up $5 a share. But then you got to see, okay, how is this going to sort itself out? You know, never been, first first time ever traded, right? Blue sky up, green sky down. Like we have no idea which way it's going to go. But if you kind of zoom in on these, you can kind of see how, after they sort themselves out, you kind of see a little shape change and now it's bumping up. That's when I went long right here. Caught the big move. That channel obviously wasn't there. I put that channel there after the top in there. Kind of sold it a little bit. Then you got the lower channel. Bought back a little more. Then it started to have a hard time getting through here. And then once we kind of flatlined around here, I bought um, some of the shares that I sold and just held them into the close. Even though it kind of rolled back down, it doesn't matter. I, I took some with me. That's fine. We'll see how it goes. We've seen crazy trades like this in NARI. And they sorted themselves out to the upside. Um, so weak hands out, strong hands in. I mean, we saw this, like I said, in NIRI, if we look at it over like a 15 day trading period and we'll look at the 20 minute chart, NARI has sorted itself out definitely to the upside. Um, and, and I expect the same thing because I like FOUR fundamentally. And I like that, um, the shares offered, I think at 20 and they opened up at like 30 and change, whatever. That's better than, you know, opening up at 40 and then just selling because all the guys that, you know, aren't, aren't, aren't required to hold it or selling because they made double their money. Um, and let's look at the 10 day, 30 minutes on NARI. So NARI look too crazy, right? And you're like, it probably would have scared a lot of people out. Open up first day move channels. Okay. A little weakness in the close like we saw today and then shake out, man. Look at this. Almost breaks the low of the first day. You don't want to see that, right? Scare the hell out of everybody. Get them out. 40, 45, 50, 54. So we're hoping to see the same move in uh, in FOUR that we saw. Don't get shaken out. Let's hope this works itself out here. Because I sold some of this too. It acted started weird. Actually, I, I, I sold this in this morning because it was freaking me out at the week close. And I took some profit in the morning and then kind of bought it back. And then I'm, I'm out of NAR right now. But nice move there. Um, SPY had resistance at 318.15, obviously blew through that. And I think the next area is like 323. I didn't even look at the SPY chart today. Duluth trading, one of our picks that we liked at five bucks, hit target price 670 and then had another gap up today, beautiful move. We'll go into more stuff later and I'll do some stuff over the weekend about this mad, crazy, bubbly market. Um, but that's my take on it. Once we start to see those areas top out on the oscillator, we'll feel free to go short the market with a little bit of uh, and you're like, what are you crazy? But look, it's, it's the psychological thing. Everybody was scared to death when the market was at the bottom, right? Just thrown in the towel capitulation. Oh my God, coronavirus, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. 
well, now everything looks so rosy, right? New all-time highs, cues, put-to-call ratio is absurdly bullish. Got to buy everything. I mean, I watched Boeing today. I mean, come on. After a big run, it was up like 20-something points at one time. I mean, come on, guys. Up 21 points? This is madness. It was up, I think, 35 at one point. So when everybody's freaking out and selling, you know, I'm usually buying. Everybody's buying hand over fist. I don't know, man. I got to start selling. Bought some TVIX today. Sold it. 211s. I'm sorry. 111s. Um, got some good entries today on TVIX, actually. Can't hold this too long, though. I've been buying and selling this thing. But today I was like, I'm just going to buy it and not even put a stop in because I'm like, the market's so strong and it's kind of gradually gravitating up. The funny thing about TVIX was as the market was strengthening, hedges were coming on man or else people that were short volatility were like okay what better time to cover markets hitting freaking all-time highs on the queues and the nasdaq is roaring out of the open so market moving up tvx also moving up with it and i was like that's a good sign let's go long bought some right off the bat once it started to kind of break this little wedge here no stop i was like all right i'm just buying this whatever this didn't rattle me out and then when it started making move at the end of the day i was like all right i gotta get out kept some into the close we'll see how it goes on monday but uh i'll update you guys more over the weekend Moderna, and the stock we hate nice loss today on that we didn't lose but that's one we've been shorting um and we'll go over some other stuff too capr we had to let go not acting correctly um financials were decently strong today too but not as strong as i'd like to see Obviously, those are some areas that we don't expect good earnings from, so probably a little trepidation there. And we'll go over some other stuff to you guys, but let's call it a night for now, and then I will talk to you guys tomorrow. This is Insanity Market checking out.